The following training took place over a two-day period. The workshop was aimed at kindergarten and first grade teachers. We began the training with finding out what STEM education is and what it's not, how it differs from what is taking place in the traditional science classroom. Teachers were introduced to reflective journaling and maintain reflective journals throughout the entire training. We ventured outside to make observations of patterns and shapes in nature and man-made objects, making the connections to structure and function. Teachers conducted inquiry-based investigations exploring the following concepts. Structure and function, math and architecture, boat engineering, materials science, ramp science, reverse engineering, and sound engineering. I find that STEM education workshops really empower the teachers. And the hope is that these teachers will go back into the classroom and empower their students as well. Oh. Right, the hurricane here. Well, your bottom is a... Um, the bottom is a trapezoid, then it's a square, well, like a cube, and then it's a pyramid at the top. Hexagon. They're still the same. And what is that? Hexagon. Hexagon. Okay. Um, yeah, we use an expert. Yeah, two, another little cube. Like this. Oh my gosh, you're kidding. They kind of look like this. We're trying to build steps to get to them, so we're just not, we're trying to figure it out. Oh. We made a camp. The camp. The roof is made of the two different parts here. It's not even. You know, the piling sink, and it's, it's, an, it's not very level. Just drop it right here. Right here. We did our own thing, and then we, then we started working together. We, we figured out whose, whose foundation was best, and then we all just started, <coughs> excuse me, adding on. Okay. In the center. Like, the one that's standing is like oh, the center. Oh, God. Oh! <laughs> Yes. Nobody breathe. And then you. I'm putting it very carefully. Oh look, it's fun, isn't it? This flow is it's got to be thinner. Gotta, gotta be, the area's got to be wider. So the bottom, it's not that the bottom is thin, it's just that the sides it's are just, thin. Yeah, I need to first one some. Yeah, the first one some. One. Two. Three. Be like, well, you just bulldozed. Oh, we didn't go. A lot of pennies and three blocks. Nope. Well, we can't do that anymore. Why? And it's not a cute shape, though, but. <laughs> so we did get more cargo in it with the hot dog design, I guess. Hot dog. <laughs> so we designed the cargo placement. And yeah. So it's all about balance. So we can even add more. And then compare. Yeah, that's neat. The more you think about it, it's kind of hard. I said it looks like a liquid, but it feels like a solid. And the more. Okay, but at the base, can we have more support at the bottom? Not well. I'm trying to level it now. We're trying to get the legs level. Oh, cool. Now it's too short. This way, this way, you have the table in the front. The balloons are going to work yet. See, look, when she puts it on the side, it's still. Yeah, they stick. <laughs> at six now. <laughs> Yeah, now we got one. Now it's going. Let's down. make the loop. Side's going down. The solid thing's not using the tape. It's what we're trying to find it, but it's just not working. And watch the corn start to level, okay? You ready now? No, it's not level. So you want to put the heaviest side on that right. side. This is really heavy, though. Should we move some okay, of these we'll just back gently here? put it. The balloons are extended. Here go. The kind of design that we went off of was thinking of a helicopter legs and we had our 
um, sticks that came down that we tried we found balls and we found that they floated and so we used those but then we secured it with tape to our tray and um, it wasn't quite level but we put the blocks mm -hmm. in and we had 19. 19 blocks before it we measured it with the ruler whenever it started wow. to sink it was at like different design at the beginning we started with those the big round noodles and we were thinking we just need to plug the hole but then when we came and tested it um, we noticed that they couldn't withstand much weight on its own that it it would just sink down so then we looked back at the supplies and said okay let's rethink this and we picked the balloons and we put it on their side because then as the weight compresses on the boon, balloon, the balloon then has the ability to expand um, to take the weight pressure on it. And um, we did. Can I cut? We can start it off on a thicker block. It stopped right here. It's all high again. Okay, let's try it. There we go. <laughs> to do like a little loop twist type thing so you get the right centrifugal force going on it. So we had to. Well, we had to figure out how to elevate the wooden part first, and we knew we had to. We wanted to make it high for the speed. <coughs> then we figured out how to connect the foam piece to it to make a loop, and we had to tape it to the chair. And then we connected the race car track to it, and. We could ask them to um, the parents to send old toys. So, I think when this the wheels moved right here, something inside is forcing these to go opposite ways, like in and out. Because look, the way it's like it, odds or something. Or actually, it's more of like a it's rocking almost back and forth. <laughs> well, what we realized was the amount of force you put depends on how high it'll go, and the surface also depends. Mm -hmm. But when you take it off, it's like a thin, very thin uh, paper material. And I was wondering, because you blow in right here, and there's only one hole, and then it's hollow inside. So I was wondering, well, where does the air come out? that makes the sound and it it comes, you know, this thin material has something to do with it. And then also how much pressure you apply with when you're blowing out depends on how loud it is. Can you give a demonstration? Okay. Well, I'm going to do it very loud. Oh, come on. Loud. We want it loud. Oh, <laughs> the sound keeps getting higher as they get smaller and then on the back they have little um, slits in it, which might have something to do with the sound it makes. Blow in it, and as you blow in it, you uh, pull the lever back, but then as you push it back on it, I guess the two airs get together, and it can adjust the pitch in the demonstration. Adjust the pitch. And the spring is connected to the bottom. And just move it. Uh, the air is, um, and the air passes through here. I guess it goes in. And I can feel it coming down on the sides as I push it in. The sound is coming from here. There's some keys on the, on the side. I'm not so sure what the keys over here for. I guess to stop the airflow from coming to the bells are all numbered and each number makes 
a different sound mm -hmm. as you go. Um, and we had a little set of bells, and I was trying to listen between them to see if the sound sounded the same, but if it was just a different pitch from the little one to match the big one. But with all Brought a journal, I didn't transfer anything in. <laughs> 